Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Rotowire hashtag After Dark Champions League show. My name is Jack Burkhart. You can find me on Twitter at Jack Burkhart. I am joined, as usual, by Ryan Belongi. And Ryan, I have to jump right into this. I have to know, was that a penalty on Saka at the very end of that Bayern Arsenal game? I mean, what a slate it was overall. But uh, what's your take? Oh, we're going to start there. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure. I had two people say to me that they thought it... One of my friends said it was a stonewall pen, but he's an Arsenal fan. I had a Liverpool fan that also told me it was a pen. You know, I ha- I think I've only seen it two times. Like, I was looking at this slate, making baseball lineups with you. I'll check it out again, but um, I guess I wasn't sure. I mean, did you have an opinion? Uh, I-, I think there's, like, one still photo that looks awful. It makes it seem like it. But what, what happens is he, like, cuts in. He sticks his leg out, like, rather... He, he really earns the contact, and I think it was fine by the effect. I've seen that not like, called. Yeah, times. They've been – fine. sorry, yeah. yeah. I think it's fine, too. Uh, it seems like they have been giving those, it's, you know, at least in Premier League. I, I don't know. Anyways, um, I don't even know where to start. It was a wild day of games. I mean, the Manchester City and Madrid game certainly lived up to the hype. I mean, absolutely incredible. And just, you know, some – world-class goals in that game. Odin, uh, Gvardiol, who, who, who we talk about. And then, you know, it, what a time to get off Valverde uh, when he, he scores. <laughs> just, just one of the sickest equalizers for 4,400 to, to make everything work. So, yeah, that was frustrating. You know, I was pretty tilted most of the day. I mean, especially with Arsenal, the first – I mean, neither – like, neither – both of the Arsenal goals came from mistakes. I mean – they gave up other chances too, but the goals they conceded were really bad. Um, felt kind of fortunate to escape with a draw in the end. Um, somehow eked out a profit in DFS. I mean, I have no idea because I didn't play any Bernardo Silva. I mean, that was funny, right? The slate just starts with a Bernardo Silva goal. I mean, there's all that too. You know, that, that goal had about a 1% chance of happening. You know, that was just awful keeping by Lunin. Um, I don't yeah, know, I don't Ryan. know, Jack. Wait, wait. I think you just got to know a little bit of ball. And when Pew 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 comes on the show and says, if the role is good for Bernardo Silva, we have permission to play him. And the role is good. Then you just get the nice luck box 12-point uh, goal right away at 6,700. Yeah. I was, you know, It was pretty I, funny. I, yeah, I think it was a fine play. Um, what did he end up scoring at 18 or whatever? You know, I ended up doing okay. Card. Because, you know, I played Vinny, Vinny Jr., in in the high stakes and he was like 24 percent uh so that helped play Gvardiol he was in in the 20s even played Jack Grealish in the end who I guess matched Bernardo Silva you know ended up doing okay but I don't know Jack like, like what did you think of the slate today um, I was mostly enjoying the games and then doing a little bit of token research for today. So I was mostly, I had mostly my eyes on Arsenal Bayern. Just my one soccer take is it seems like the Jorginho gambit that really failed. It, it's, it seemed like Bayern were just able to slice the back line on the counter. And I just wondered if Arsenal maybe didn't choose like a slightly older, unathletic, you know, metronome type of midfielder. When the game had a lot of chaotic scripts, it just didn't feel like you were getting anything out of Jorginho there. So I wondered your take as an Arsenal fan about, you know, if you would rather choose slightly different personnel. Uh, not a DFS mm, team, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I was okay with it. Just because he's been playing so well, and Arsenal have been playing so well with him, and clearly Thomas Party is not ready to be out there. I mean, he's just looked he looked so bad when he was out there today, and even when he came on over the weekend. I guess, yeah, they could, you know, play a more attacking lineup, but I don't know. You, they know they've been so good like, lately with Jorginho, and specifically Jorginho. But yeah, I don't know. Like, what can you say? Like, Bayern have a bunch of great players. Uh, they the tactics were right to try to hit Arsenal on the counter, but big mistakes like from Gabriel and Saliba led to the goals. I, I don't know. It was just it was one of those days. They were getting really far forward, like especially early in the game, like Saliba and Gabriel. They were they were dribbling up there and. In some of Bayern's counters that I saw, it's like, well, it, there was just no one back there at the start, and it looked like they were able to really threaten early on. So I don't know. I thought Bayern played uh, pretty well. I was impressed by what they did. I was not super impressed by how Arsenal handled the situation. But, you know, they have one game under their belt. It's a young team. And uh, 
I don't, I, you know, it's going to be kind of a toss up, maybe a slight lean towards Bayern when they play in Munich next week. But um, I think Arsenal will give them a game and it might be a little bit nicer that they have nothing to lose. Maybe that'll somehow, uh, well, it's not nothing to lose, but I think it'll maybe this takes some of the pressure off somehow. And maybe they can play a little bit more loose and play their game. But uh yeah, those are my those are my takes overall. I wanted to talk a little bit about DFS. So, you know, we were talking about how it was a very difficult cash slate. I my cash lineup. It was awesome to have uh, Pew 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 on the show yesterday, just spitting awesome knowledge, like a, a true master just listening to him talk about it. So I thought that was a ton of fun. And where did I go in cash? Well, it was kind of complicated. We have Kevin De Bruyne out, and this made me not want to play Holland at a forward position. It made Phil Foden a viable cash play. You had to be on your toes a little bit, but it was only two games, so it wasn't exactly rocket science. I settled on uh, Sokka and Foden, who were super popular. And then for my midfield trio, where I thought there were some decisions, I opted for Bernardo Silva in hopes of some set pieces. That worked out great, as we mentioned, and the role was pretty good. Declan Rice at 6,300. I wanted to get as much Arsenal exposure as possible because I thought they'd be the team that pushed. I did not expect a 3-3 for Manchester City Real Madrid. We expect that to be kind of a stale game, and that was quickly thrown out the window. And uh, I played Odegaard at 7,300, who's not a typical cash play, but I didn't want to play Josh Kimmich at 7K as a right back. That chalk definitely busted. I ended up on Ruben Diaz, Rudiger, and Raya. I have Pew's lineup. He did a 2v2 instead of Odegaard. And uh, I don't, yeah, he played Tony Cruz instead of, he played, he, it was a 3v3, but whatever. He used salary savings on Tony Cruz to get up to Ben White, which I thought was interesting. I never really considered paying up for Ben White. Um, I end up cashing kind of a chaotic slate. I feel fortunate about it. I don't know, Ryan, what do you think about these two lineups? And uh, I can pull yours up soon. As yeah, well. put a, put them, put on my lineup too. It's actually, this actually turned into be, turned out to be a very interesting slate. I'll tell you the decisions. I could have yeah. landed on a number of different cash lineups. So I ended up playing Ben White too. Um, if you look like the two V two, I missed, I could have went down to Gravardi all from white and then up to Odegaard from Kimmich. I did not want to play Kimmich though. So, so mid- midfield was interesting because there ended up being yeah. like six, six midfielders to choose from. Let, let's mm-hmm. see, like, let's see Declan and Odegaard, then Kimmich and Cruz and then Grealish and Bernardo Silva. So I thought, I thought like six guys to choose from. For me, like I was just always going to play Declan here. Like you said, I kind of thought the same thing. He just sort of felt safe, at least much safer than Kimmich or Cruz, and also with more upside. Um, I wanted to get a city piece. I thought Grealish was just too cheap. Um, And I just, I kind of liked Grealish's floor in the spot with the foul drawn, and I thought he'd play 90 minutes. And then, actually, I wasn't planning on playing him, but then when KDB didn't start, you figure he might be good for a couple sets. And he actually was. They, they just Because they, they didn't have Julian Alvarez out there either, so Grealish is going to take the right-footed sets. I would not have played Grealish in cash if it, if it wasn't for no KDB starting, but I thought that made it okay. Um, and I thought playing Ben White might give me at least some edge because at least part of my thinking in tournaments was that I sort of mentioned it on the pod yesterday. And then when lineups came out, like I wanted to try to beat the Rudiger lineups, you know, because he, he was a fine play. But I thought there was enough value or cheaper plays that maybe you could beat the Rudiger lineups with the Ben Whites and Gavardiol and those type of guys. Um, but yeah, for cash, I, I don't like that. I clicked Kimmich, but like, I wasn't going to click Kai Havertz. I don't think instead. And I also looked at going to like swapping Foden and Kimmich for Vinny and Odegaard, but I just figured Foden was going to be such massive chalk. You shouldn't, you should, probably shouldn't do that. I ended up fading Foden in tournaments and it, it still worked out great, but it was working out amazing. Cause he, he was the highest owned player and I kind of, or besides Saka. And yeah, anyway, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. It was a tough cash slate, though. Really, the six midfielders to choose from without there being clear options. I thought Cruz was okay, too, but like going down to him didn't really get me anything else. I also wasn't going to fade Rudiger in cash just because you don't want to lose that way. It doesn't matter for cash, but for tournaments, you can get an edge there. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was tough when you had to choose between six. Uh 
six midfielders, and I think there were a ton of viable lineups. I didn't think to play Grealish in cash, but it was, of course, ex- acceptable in these circumstances at 5,900 in a good spot. I know, Ryan, there's some late line movement towards Real Madrid. Like, the, the after the lineups came out, the pinnacle line moved 5% their way. I thought, oh, does that mean I play Tony Cruz? But at the end of the day, it was 5%. It really didn't change my opinion on how City were going to attempt to approach it. So I, it just felt like a trap play. I felt a little lucky that I, Kimmich only got three points because that was a pretty back and forth game. Maybe yeah, there's some luck there, right. but I'm happy. I played three guys who I thought had outs Odegaard rice and Silva. They had a lot of different ways to, you know, get acceptable points totals. Whereas maybe Kimmich and Cruz were slightly more limited. It's very fine margins in these things, Ryan. Yeah. So I think Kimmich ran about as bad as possible just with Bayern equalizing early, getting the lead, having the lead for most of the game. I mean, they were never going to attack much or get get that many shots. Um, just the last thing about the City guys, though, you mentioned not con- considering Grealish. Or how, how is Bernardo Silva a cash play and Grealish isn't when Bernardo's like $800, $800 more? I just like... You know. I just thought about a recent set piece sample that I had. I think I've thrown like... I thought, oh, maybe... You're right that maybe Jack Grealish takes set pieces, but in these types of lineups before, you know, when City were dealing with some injuries, we had seen Bernardo Silva take some set pieces. And I also thought Bernardo Silva was more likely to play a full 90 minutes than Jack Grealish, which I think matters somewhat as well. Um, yeah, the, I don't know, that, you're not wrong. Yeah, no, that that's fair. Um, I actually thought, you know, correct or not, that, Grealish's sets were safer, you know, just because he's literally the only right footer that's going to take him. And I had seen that Bowden had been taking over Bernardo Silva recently. Like, I don't know. That's a miss on my end. You know everybody's foot in Europe, so that's one of the key edges that I think uh, you possess that I don't. And I'm kind of joking, but it's also not. I mean, if Foden, Foden had been taking them, I saw that in the logs. I'm like, okay, well, it'll be Foden and Bernardo, but the footedness matters, you know, if you want to be taking in swingers or out swingers, whatever Pep prefers. So that, that's a little... A little edge goes your way, but, uh, you know, Bernardo Silva is a magician on the free kick, uh, sneaking goals past Loon and due to bad goalkeeping. So the process. <laughs> still Overall, got there though, at least. Yeah, still got there in cash. Cash saved my day. I hunted down tickets for this GPP, Ryan, and uh, it didn't really go well. So, oh, well, you know, survive in advance. I'm taking some shots and uh, maybe one of them will land eventually. And if not, there's always the Euros. But let's get into this um, two-gamer. Not as high profile of matchups, but still some pretty exciting matchups. A lot of exciting players and teams that we were looking at, Ryan. Um, the first matchup we have Atletico Madrid hosting Borussia Dortmund. Um, you know, about 53% to win. So that's about the same odds that Arsenal had to win at home today. It, not, no high goal totals, really, but um, decent clean sheet odds. 40% clean sheet odds stick out to me. No one's goal total sticks out to me. So I think we're just, you know, we, there's no like must target matchup or obvious mismatch here. Um, at the same time, there's not many uh, fantasy relevant Atletico Madrid players. I mean, you have, uh, from a DFS point of view, Antoine Griezmann is always a good play. And then it's kind of a roulette wheel of who subs, who even starts. You know, does Raquel may start or does Lino start? It's they're a little bit of a headache for a favorite. So I think that makes this slate interesting. And the other matchup that we have with a slightly higher total is PSG at home against Barcelona. That's probably the more marquee matchup. You know, two slightly more favorite teams. We have a very expensive Kylian Mbappe, who is the most likely goal scorer overall. I still think he's a really good play, though. I kind of just want to click him and Antoine Griezmann going forward but i don't think barcelona are exactly slouches either i think they've been playing a little bit better lately and they have some good plays as well so and if you think about it from a dfs perspective ryan the three best plays which i believe you have Greatsman, and then you have um killing mbappe and then I think I'm also interested just because of the nature of being a favorite and a set piece taker, Usman Dembele. All three of those guys are expensive and it doesn't leave you with much to spend for the entire slate. And there are viable alternatives. So I think this slate has a bit more like strategic richness than the other one, at least on paper. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. But um, I don't know. What are your first thoughts about the matches, the slate and uh, DFS? Yeah, a lot of similar thoughts to what you had. Um Starting with starting with Madrid, you said it. It's Griezmann, and then yeah, really nowhere else. Uh, at least like from from a cash game perspective, there might be guys you can go to as the last piece, but like no other priorities. 
And then up against Dortmund, who are also tough for DFS, like you don't think we don't really want to play Brant in this spot. I, I don't want to play Brant in good spots. And he hasn't really done much to, I don't make me want to prioritize him here. Uh, I think Jaden Sancho is pretty cheap, but we'll, we'll get into that later. He looks pretty good. PSG, I agree with you. I want to play Mbappe, even without set pieces. I just feel more comfortable at him. The, the minutes, are the minutes a worry? I don't know. He, let me see. He's, you know, he subbed on last game. He got subbed after 65. It's been sort of a high profile thing uh since you know they know he's leaving after this season but i'm not going to worry about that i mean he's been playing 90 in the champs league they're playing they're at home against barcelona like how can you take mbappe off in this spot um you know i'd prioritize him over dembele just because the minutes worry me there even i mean he rarely plays 90 uh he rarely plays over 80 um they have other guys that take sets once in a while plenty of subs to come on to. So I think he's a fine play, um, but I don't think it's like a great matchup against Barca. This is one of those where I wish he had someone like Pew to ask because wouldn't even be shocking if, you know, Barcelona are the team with more floor in the spot. We've seen it before, like in, in, in seasons past, I don't know how these teams currently match up, but, you know, PSG doesn't have the greatest defense. I, I don't know. Um, on the Barcelona side, like I said, I think there's floor points for these Barcelona guys. I can see this game getting back and forth. Um, I think both their set takers are pretty decent options. Uh, Rafinha and Gunduan. Normally, I would say Gunduan because you like the, uh, the, the, the safety and the, the salary savings, but I think they're priced a little bit close together now for my liking and just based on the upside that Rafinha offers. And they've been kind of splitting sets equally recently. Um, so then my overall thoughts are start with Mbappe and Griezmann and go from there. Yeah, I think those are all fair points. The Barcelona, you know, forwards are pretty good plays. I mean, Lewandowski, he's not a cash option on this slate, but in tournaments, you always have to consider someone like him. You have Rafinha and Lamine Yamal. Yamal's kind of cheap in this matchup, you know, sub 7K, and he's a player who can do some damage. Not set pieces if um, Gundogan and Rafinha are starting, but still worth consideration. It's not like PSG are prohibitive favorites, and, you know, Barcelona are a team that can play. So I think those are interesting points there. I gravitated towards Dembele because he was a home favorite right away, but maybe it's not so clear cut a decision on that side. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Atletico Madrid, maybe their lineup changes a little bit. I had noticed that Jaden Sancho takes some set pieces, a couple news items that I actually wanted to mention. So kind of bizarre seeing Warren Zaire Emery projected to start it right back, but Hakimi is suspended for this tie. And I think PSG are going through some injuries. So maybe that adds a little bit to, uh, you know, Rafinha playing on the left side right there. Although Zaire Emery is an excellent player. He will be out of position. So maybe you will want to see how scrambled that PSG back line is. I know Marquinhos might come back. That might help things out a little bit. So you're going to have to wait and see. But I think that lends a little bit more credence to the um, Barcelona take there. And then what else did I have? I think Hakimi being out was the the main thing. I mean, Pedri might start for um, Barcelona. But that's all I got for as far as like DFS relevant injuries. If something comes up, we'll be sure to tell you. But yeah, Ryan, I mean, we talked about the two best forward plays. It's going to be Mbappe and it's going to be Griezmann. And, you know, Dembele is a reasonable option. Rafinha is a good option as well. Those two stand out to me. Do any of the other forwards stand out to you? It, it, there's going to be a lot of opportunity costs to play other forward eligible players. You know, you only have one utility spot. Maybe you can use some dual eligibility at midfield because I don't think there's any must-have midfielders. Julian Brandt is not a must-have in that spot. That's kind of a classic six-game Champions League uh sort of setup where we use forward eligible players in a midfield spot. But um, I don't know who appeals to you at the forward position outside of the names we've already mentioned. Yeah, you mentioned it's tough to get off these guys. It's, it is, it's a lot of opportunity costs, but also, you know, Mbappe is not guaranteed a goal at 10, five. Um, look what happened on the slate today. Would we have 10 goals and uh, everyone scoring? You know, I never even considered Serge Gnabry. Serge Gnabry as the cheapest forward on the slate. And of course he scores, you know, so like 
who who are those guys in this spot? I don't know. All the all the Dortmund guys are kind of cheap. Um, Malins, I I always like Adiyemi. I don't think anybody's going to play him. I'm a big fan of his. Um, Bulk rug. I don't think anybody's going to play him. Uh, I, yeah, he, Jaden Sancho though. He's just too cheap at at fifty one hundred. Uh, you mentioned taking some sets recently, but I think really only when Brant's not out there, at least for the most part, but Brant doesn't normally play 90. And I think Sancho has a better chance to play 90. He's also back in form and seems to be enjoying his football again back at Dortmund. So I think Sancho, yeah, he's just too cheap at 5,100. Um, I think he's fine for any format. On um, on the Atletico side, Murata for tournaments. Yeah, I just don't think people are going to want to go there. But you know, maybe this is who. What if Madrid come out and win three nothing? You know, that's in the realm of possibility. So you pair him with Griezmann, or even I guess you could play him over Griezmann. It's one of those maybe Murata scores and then Griezmann busts. That that also happens. Um, you mentioned in the Barca game, yeah, Yamal's cheap. I don't think many people will get to Lewandowski, but he makes sense here if that game goes back and forth. I mean, Jack, you know, sort of obviously everyone's in play. It's a two-game Champions League slate. We've seen how it's just wild Champions League is every single slate, it seems like. Um, So you can make strong cases for pretty much anyone. I don't know. Like, what's your take? I think you can make strong cases for pretty much everyone. I'm kind of nodding along. I'm like, yeah, they're a good play. They're a good play. I mean, like Bradley Barcola at 5,800. I know he's questionable. If he starts, he's very cheap, but you know, I, I there's been a, the, from the lineup constructions I've done, Ryan, I've had to find someone in this like $5,000 range who I'm going to end up playing. So I think you'll see stuff like that come up and maybe if you can squeeze the extra 1000, you can make room for an Adeyemi or something like that. So it just depends. And we saw from the slate today that these games can get a little bit wacky and a little bit off script. Like we, we spent 10 minutes talking about how turgid we expected this Manchester city real Madrid game could be. And it was exciting. I mean, we're both teams expected goals below one. Uh, yes, that's the case, but it it was back and forth and it, and it was pretty fun. So these things can go off script a little bit and these probabilities aren't that strong. So I think you should be willing to at least consider in a tournament portfolio going off these guys. Ryan, I'm only building two lineups. So I'm probably Xing out all of these Dortmund guys, except for Sancho. That makes him a good option in large field GPPs, I think, if you're going to play in that format. Morata, though, was one of my favorite tournament options. I think at 7,700, he's fairly cheap and it is the best matchup. He's a bit of a statue forward, but... Ownership will be spread out, and I like guys who have an opportunity to get a brace, and I think that spot is quite ripe for Maratza to get a brace. Um, all of that overall, yeah, play whoever you want, I guess, but I think there's both, some edges both? to be Yeah, for sure. I, good points about Maratta. Both both uh, Madrid and Man City had XG under one today. Yeah, it was 0. 0.7 to 0. 0.88, so mm. the Real Madrid expected goal beating monster uh, – they got away and with you it get, one more time. You have the best players in the world on the field, so you end up getting a three to three. I mean, yeah, wow, that's just unbelievable. Yeah, that's a that's a crazy stat. Some some ridiculous strikes. I mean, the Fetty goal that's a Puskas worthy. Perhaps we'll just have to for sure. And even that. like the Foden and Gavardiol strikes were pretty, you know, top class goals. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome when we see the most talented players in the champagne world. football, Jack champagne football Mm -hmm. love it not as quite as good as the champagne of beers miller high life but they do not sponsor (laughs) the show so uh (laughs) onward we go ryan i think we talked about every forward and it's pretty straightforward to fill out the cash guys so i think we can move on to the midfield position i think the most interesting name here is ilkay gundawan and if you want to prioritize fitting him into a midfield spot because that is going to have to change your construction um you're probably not going to be able to play usman dembele if you choose to play, if you choose to play Gundogan, or you know, it's going to be tough to play him and Rafinha. I think based on the lineup constructions I've done, maybe you can make it work. I don't know. It just didn't seem like the cheap defenders were abundant enough. And uh, Gundogan's been pretty good, but with Rafinha, I saw recently Rafinha took four set pieces, had four set piece, cro- set piece crosses, 
And Gundogan only had one, and you really don't fancy him for that type of situation. So if you're considering playing Gundogan in cash games or other formats, uh, Ryan, like what things are you looking for that might be bullish or bearish on Gundogan's uh, fantasy outlook? Oh, I think he's just a decent play no matter what. I mean, if this is the lineup with Christensen and De Young in there, like he's going to be forced to be at least a little more attacking. So I, I think he's just a good play no matter what. I think the spot's fine. I think you could back and forth game. You know, he probably split sets. Um, I I play Gunduan quite a bit, um, but I just like, and normally I don't really play Rafinha, especially not over Gunduan, but. I think I'm going to try to find the 900 here. Usually they're not priced this close. And, you know, maybe it's more of a tournament take, but yeah, Rafinha, I think, has higher upside. And he's he's been playing longer. Um, so, yeah, like I'd be fine if I could only get to Gundo in cash games. But at least for tournaments, I want to find that 900 for Rafinha. Yeah, Rafinha's form is really good, Ryan. I got uh, two assists in the last three games and a goal. Looks like he's been crushing it. Well, he needed the assist to get the to get to 10 DraftKings points. But the floor has been pretty good. The minute's a little bit sporadic. I'm a little bit more queasy about that, but I certainly understand your point of view if you're playing things like the 333. It's, it's, right, it's, it's probably more of a tournament take. You know, G- Gundo is the safer option. For, I feel safer about that for cash games. You know, you know he's going to play 90 minutes, and you're pretty sure he's got a 10-point floor in this spot. And he has upside, too, Gunduan. Yeah. I think uh, Adam uh, tinkered with these lineups from when I made my lineup sheets because I didn't see that Christensen was in. I wasn't sure if he was going to be fit, but I think he. I did read that he has trained the past two days. That is certainly a very good lineup for Gunduan. I saw a lineup there where Furman Lopez might have started, so that may be slightly more concerned, you know, splitting set pieces and you have a slightly more attacking midfielder. We'll just have to see how it rolls out. I mean, there are a lot of surprises in the starting lineups um, today overall. Um, I agree with you though, 7,500 for Julian Brandt in a bad matchup for a player who's not even playing 90 minutes. That's brutal. So I'm not too interested in him. Vitinha might be interesting, but just doesn't seem like with this line that we have projected that he will take set pieces. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, Lauren, because I think he's going to have to be one of the more forward playing midfielders. Um, I think a bear in Discord has called him like a mercurial player, one who's a, has a big range of outcomes. So maybe not one you want to target in cash, but a name that might be interesting in GPP formats. Um, if for Quelme starts at 6,300, I notice he's been crossing. I have a lineup, dummy lineup with him in, hoping that he starts. That's like one of the um, secondary Atletico Madrid players that I'm interested in, just because he seems like a talented young player with a good role. But otherwise, we're scrolling down, and uh, it, it's weak overall at the midfield position, Ryan. So what are your takes on the other midfield eligible players? Yeah, Vitinha, I'm, Vitinha is who I'm looking at. He's a tough one to get right. I just I see a couple of games ago he had 34 DraftKings points, a goal and two assists. He's actually, he actually has a goal in his last two starts. Um yeah, he seems like a fine tournament player, right? Um he's gonna be out there for 90 minutes and he can score an assist. I wouldn't uh bank on any set pieces, but you never know, right? I, I'm I'm trying to see who Who's going to take their right-footed sets or who has been? Or we'll just – oh, Dembele. Sorry. Yeah, D- Dembele will – will. I wouldn't expect Vitini to take any sets, but he is sort of a mercur- mercurial player, and he's a fine option for tournaments. Um, don't really want to play Brandt. I mean, I get it. I guess he, he can get there. I'm just not a Brandt guy. You know, we, t- we talk about it all the time, and in, not in this spot. Uh, maybe – Maybe in the return leg in in Germany, we'll see. But uh, I think someone from Atletico is is okay. Um, not great options, but I, I never mind playing Urente. I just think he's a good player. I think he can score goals. I think he plays ninety minutes quite often in the Champs League. He's only five k, so I don't I don't mind going there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Not much else. Did, did did you mention someone else? I don't really see anyone else I'm considering. Yeah, it, 
it, if there were no punts in yesterday's slate, there's really no one who I want to play that's like below the forty five hundred dollar level here. One name, Ryan, you like uh, Urente. I like clicking Rodrigo DePaul's name. I feel like he's a player who has some splash games in him and has some decent floors. Sometimes he gets like some tackles ones and stuff. So maybe you get screwed with a yellow card every now and then. But I don't hate DePaul at 5,200 at this price, though I think his minutes are slightly more suspect. Um, I don't know, Ryan. Would you rather play uh, Rodrigo DePaul or would you rather play uh, – who can you? Who else can you play in the midfield position? You can play Jaden Sancho at 5,100 um, instead for an underdog. That's something of an interesting dilemma, at least to me. I don't know. Where would you side on something like that? Um, That's the type of decision we're looking at. DePaul's minutes bother me, and he just – he hasn't – he hasn't been showing as much upside as that maybe he used to, or at least I used to think he had what one goal this season. I mean, less than a shot per game. I like him as a player, but I just think his, his good fantasy games are too few and far between at this point. I remember on the last Madrid slate, I said, basically the only guy you can't touch is Koke. I never touched Koke and he scored double digit points for, Possibly the first time all season, got an assist and fi- finished with 11. I mean, there are no punts on this slate. Or sorry, there's just, there's, yeah, like cheaper than 5K. They're very, like, you know, like Zaire Emery, I guess, 4,200. He's going to play right back. Maybe he's worth mentioning. Um, so I don't know. I don't hate anybody clicking Koke. Like, he's not that much worse than uh, uh, DePaul and Urente, but. He just it's very hard to see him score over 10, but I guess he could do it with an assist. Yeah, I guess if you're not playing Jan Oblak, uh, there's probably like thinking just with my tournament brain, if I'm not playing Jan Oblak in a lineup and I'm spending in this price range, Sancho just makes so much more sense for a variety of reasons. So, you know, you're not playing. Maybe, and, it, and maybe even with Oblak. I think there's scenarios where a 10 point floor with that with Dortmund chasing the game would be enough for 5k. And yeah. there's also scenarios where no keeper keeps a clean sheet and maybe Atletico win 2 to 1 and Sancho scores the goal. Yeah, I mean we saw a, it was a disgusting goalkeeper slate today. You had the minus 4 from David Raya at 5200 and then I don't think a goalkeeper scored over a point and a half otherwise. It, it was it, it was a complete nothing bomb. Now, I've never seen that happen, but things like that can happen to less extreme extents. You know, it could happen that the top scoring goalkeeper is like six points and then, you know, whatever. You just need to get the other spots right. It's unlikely to be a difference maker. Definitely. But, um, yeah, I don't know. In that spirit, I'll, I'm only playing two lineups, so I'm not going to click Marcel Sabitzer. But I just think he's a really good player. And uh, I don't mind playing talented players who are capable of uh, goals and sometimes taking set pieces. Uh, a large field dart, if you're interested in that. Um, any other takes on midfield, Ryan? Um, who's... Sorry, just let me check. Fabian Ruiz, he's, the, uh, he's probably going to be the other midfielder that starts for PSG. I don't know what's... He's a more defensive yeah. player, right? If I I well, haven't. I guess he's he, got good numbers. He 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 just doesn't play that often, but he actually gets forward and takes shots, and it, depending on the lineup, um, I don't know. Like he's not much worse than these other guys, I guess. Is all like, yeah, forty six hundred, fifteen hundred dollars cheaper than Vitinha. Maybe he's the one getting a little bit more forward instead of Vitinha. Um, if you think that Ryan, that uh, ten points can be enough at your second midfield spot, I think it lends credence to uh, considering options like this. So, yeah, good points. I mean, on, yeah, I think it can on some line, on some uh, in certain scenarios. I mean, don't you or? Well, we're talking. We have. We didn't really talk too much about the best plays. Like, we have Mbappe who can go nuclear on any slate, and then Griezmann can score a lot of floor points and also score goals. So if two expensive players go off right away, then it just becomes more viable that you need a cheap option to make the rest of the lineup work. And uh, I think the best plays are the expensive plays to some extent. You know, my right. Team, like actually I it's funny. Expensive <laughs> forwards. Go ahead. Reminded me of the conversation I was having today. 
making lineups about Valverde. Um, like my friend was surprised I wasn't on Valverde, and but yeah, I just said I was going more balanced, and I wasn't sure if like his if he could get if even if if seven points like would be enough, um, unless those like the expensive guys went up. I don't know. I don't remember where, where I was going with this, but it was, it, it was, it was kind of a similar take. Like, I, whereas this could be different, you know, if you get 20, po- 20 plus points from Mbappe and Griezmann, like one of the five K guys that scores eight or 10 can easily be optimal. I didn't know if, you know, today's slate would be like that because, you know, he had so we had all those six midfielders that we already mentioned. You know, when we were talking about cash, so like Valverde seemed like a tall order. You would really need the the expensive guys to go off and you would have to have multiple of them. Like, I, I don't know, just a, so, sort of a tangent. Like I wasn't playing lineups that had Saka, Foden, Vinny, like three, the three most expensive players, whereas maybe then you would use someone like Valverde. It turned out that construction ended up being perfect because Vinny smashed and Saka smashed. But I don't know. Yeah, that 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 was today. I wasn't sure that that was like I thought you might be losing with that strategy, but tomorrow, you know, the we want like there, there's a gap between how good the expensive guys are and then like the other players on this slate. Yeah, and even if you played Fetty Valverde, it wasn't clear that it paid off. Like, was he in the winners, Ryan? I'm not sure. Yeah, because all those, you know, like probably Grealish and Bernardo both scored more than him and they were cheap. And I don't know. He might have been, though, still. I don't, I didn't, I actually didn't see what he scored. So maybe he scored over 20. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We can look it up and maybe talk about it in Discord or something. Roar. Doesn't matter. Backslash I mean... soccer trial. I think it kind of does matter because it lends credence to, okay, Fetty Valverde was a player who could score a goal. He's super talented. And it didn't matter because there were so many good plays that, and they were kind of cheap, like Jack Grealish, only 5,900. You just aren't gaining enough <laughs> because there are good plays. And if it's a little bit weaker at the midfield position, then you can start to consider something like that. But when you're competing, when there's a lot of traffic for right. you know, which midfielders and you want like, to play, then it's less all, Right. And all, yeah, I know exactly. And also when, when KDB didn't start too, like that even makes someone like Valverde less, you know, cause you don't have to a fit, fit KDB and Saka, like for sure, um, where, where you might need a punt. Um, and usually, you know, the city midfielders aren't that cheap. They're not priced that close together, but yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the top lineups right now on the main GPP and I have not seen Valverde. I mean, you just had cheap goals from Grealish and Silva. And I think that was the salary savings that you needed to, get away with everything else. You know, we have Gavardio who made a huge difference. Okay. Second place right here played Ben White and Gavardio and then Valverde. Well, what a sick lineup. Vinny Jr., Rodrigo, Foden, Odegaard, Ben White, Gavardio, Ortega, and then Valverde. I don't know if I would have played that lineup, Brian, but I think that's kind of close to construction with three expensive. Valverde with Ortega? Yeah. Oh, is this team? Interesting move. Yeah. This team might be bad. Um, Vinny, I'm just Rodrigo, there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're jam. You're, we're jam. We're gonna jam Madrid and play the and play Ortega. I can't. All get right. Behind that. You just just change change the goalkeeper to you know freaking Lunin, and then it's gonna be yeah. okay. <laughs> you could have changed. It's funny though that you see those lineups up there, just like it's nothing. Yeah, maybe that's how I have to play. You know, I haven't won, so there we go. Well, it's I mean, funny uh, because you think if you played it, Vinny, Rodrigo, and Valverde. For that lineup to get second place, you for sure need two two Real Madrid goals. So, like, how in the world is Ortega going to be optimal? But and Lunin was cheaper. <laughs> Just scroll yeah. down and play. I mean, did it fill the third team requirement? I mean, I I, I forgot. No, the no, the no, lineup, because but... you had you had um, Real Madrid, Manchester City, and Arsenal in it, so uh, you didn't even need it for right. the third team requirement. And uh, well, yeah. Oh. DFS regular a piano club. I didn't notice he was the winner in that one. So well, shout out to you piano club if you're listening. But after that segue, let's take a look at the defense position, Ryan. Um, no Hakimi, like I said, Cancelo's expensive, but he's a player who has upside of 5,500. 
not a a player who I think I've seen him pay off on, at low ownership. I think for FSI's a tendril storm. I think in the group stage he played Cancelo on a slate where no one really wanted to, and he absolutely crushed. That was a six gamer, so a little bit different. I don't think you'll sneak Cancelo by, but he's an option with the upside. Molina is a player at 4,900 who takes set pieces but doesn't regularly play 90 minutes. He's an interesting play, and I'd like to play him, but not a priority just due to playing time. And, uh, oh, that game could be a little bit weird. You know, outside of Molina and Cancelo, though, I think I'm going to start scrolling down. The next name I'm interested in is uh, Julian Ryerson at 3,400, you know, just because he's a fullback who's alive who might have to chase the game and pitch in some crosses. I don't know, Ryan, what do you think about the defender position? Yeah, it's a really weak slate for defender. <clears throat> I was hoping to just jam in Hakimi because I think he would have been a great play on this slate. Um, but yeah, he's suspended. Do you think uh, Cancelo will get ownership? I mean, what, what do you think it'll be like on this slate? Oh, it's always when you have these guys with upside who are questionable plays, it's always like 25% on a two gamer. So it's you're not even guaranteed to win if he goes off. <laughs> So yeah, we just my thought, my initial like def- defender is bad. My initial th- and like it's not a great spot for Cancelo uh, away to PSG. Um, so I thought I would fade him and try to just max out the money at forward and midfield with with the best plays. But then I don't know. The more I think about it, it's just the rest of defender is so bad that. 10 points from Cancelo I might be pretty good. So I'm kind of warming to him. Um, like Molina, you feel like he should be a good play, but he's just, he just never, it does anything. And he, get, he gets subbed. I don't, he just, he doesn't have a lot of, you got to look at his game log. It's just, you know, he does take corners here and there and, he gets forward here and there, but he really doesn't have much of a floor. And but yeah, I don't mind playing him, like partly because the rest of the position is weak, but he's just not a great option. So I feel like I'd lean Cancelo there. Yeah, the Bayern guys are fine. Ryerson at 3,400 is fine. You really don't expect him to do much. Like, is anyone on PSG playable? I don't know. Like, you know, for not really for cash. For tournaments, maybe. Obviously, for tournaments is fine. But, like, man, Defender is really bad on this slate. Again, it just pushes me to Cancelo, even though I don't want to really play him. Like, today I didn't really want to play Ben White, but I thought similarly that, like, he's still a much better play than Rudiger. So, like, let me try to gain four points on the field. Like, you know, that th- this is kind of the same thing, but you may need that money for Mbappe, Grease, and if you want to play one more, especially. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's tough, tough decision. I think maybe one thing going in the Ben White decision's favor was that pricing was a little bit soft. Like, if you weren't playing two 9K guys, I th- you could basically just about play whoever you want. And I think in those situations, then it makes more sense to pay up for Defender. There's a lot, all the plays I want to play are quite expensive, like 7K and above. So I think that lends credence to some line of constructions. Even if Cancelo gets 10, well, what if Atletico Madrid keep a clean sheet and I can play uh, Jimenez and Aspliqueta sub 3K each, jam some really expensive players who have good ceilings and good floors, get five points each out of them. Then I almost think 10 points isn't enough, Ryan, if the outfield, if enough of the outfield players goes off. So I think there is merit to that construction as well, just because if it's possible, I haven't tested it. If it's possible to access, you know, five forward, five forward players or like someone like Gundogan who takes set pieces, everyone who can fire off and you find the five that do fire off. If that happens, then I think a clean sheet, just double center back might have some merit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I will try to see if I can make that work. The argument for that too is, there's no value really at besides Sancho who some may even consider questionable. Like we talked about the cheap, there's, there's really no good punts. So yeah, like if you can jam some ceilings or even high floors in the five spots and punt two defenders. Yeah. That, that would definitely work too. Yeah. And whatever you clean sheet you want, I think it will be accessible. Like, um, 
if this is the Atletico Madrid lineup, you'll at least have Jimenez. And then I think there should be a 3K or below defender who plays, depending if uh, Azpilicueta starts or not. Um, you could play two Barcelona defenders, sub 3K, if you want to play some type of contrarian option. Um, it really does depend with PSG. Maybe you can't do that. But I've seen lineups where Marquinhos and Screenar start. They're not too expensive if you want to go that way. And then uh, I won't play for a Dortmund clean sheet, but you could, I mean, with cheap defenders all the way. So you can literally do it with any team as well. That makes me extra tempted by it. So we'll see how it all works out. But uh, yeah, if if it's not Cancelo, I'm scrolling all the way down. I don't really want to play Cancelo, just the, the more I think of it. Um, I think you're right about it, that. If I can find, t- yeah. Um, I just don't think it's the greatest matchup up against Dembele either. Like, I don't know how... I don't know how, um, like, guaranteed Ken Salo is for 10 floor points, you know? Yeah, it maybe feels more guaranteed for a yellow card <laughs> or something along those right. lines. Right, like, yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, DFS Chan says uh, Ken Salo season, so he's a fan right there. So one of us will win then, Chan. He is one of those players that, you know... Seems like when you fade him, he he punishes you. Going back to something, Ozzy, who's always in the chat. So shout out to Ozzy Ortega with five with point five six fantasy points, the highest scoring goalie. I do not think we'll see. I've played this game for a while, Ryan. I don't think I've ever seen that. So that That's is uh, truly impressive. Wow. But we go dumpster diving at goalie uh, one more time, and it's a similar pricing dynamic to yesterday's slate. Um, you know, I'd like to play Oblak if I can at 5,500. Really talented goalkeeper. I think Atletico Madrid will probably win. It seems fine. I don't want to play Donnarumma because I just think Barcelona are more likely to score a goal. So that leaves me looking at Oblak, Ter Stegen, and then Kobel. I'll click whoever I need to make a cash lineup work, Ryan. But uh, do you have any thoughts on these guys? Yeah, I think... I think if you don't play Mbappe, Ter Stegen's a good play. Um, I don't mind. Yeah, I would like to get up to all block. You know, their, their winning clean sheet chances are the best, but I don't mind going all the way down to Kobel. And I'm fine playing Griezmann with Kobel too, even even in tournaments. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't have, I don't have many thoughts. Jack, sorry. I mean, I'll probably just, I'm going to make two lineups. I'm probably going to play O block in both of them because I don't really plan on attacking the, I don't, I don't plan on attacking the Stortman spot. And I don't know, Sancho seems fine, Ryan, but I don't want to play lineup construction with him. It kind of just feels like a, I know he's in better form, but it's a really tough matchup. You know, we were, we had our MLB hats on. We we're talking about bad chalk. If Sancho's chalky, I'm just not interested in playing him. And well, okay, if I have to play him in cash, I'll play him in cash. I don't care. But, you know, we're making, one major tournament lineup. Yeah. I'll probably just end up on old block on both teams. Yeah. That makes sense. I'll try to get up to old block. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'll try to get up to old block, but I don't know. It's just, I'm just not going to play. I'll probably just won't play key. You know, I'm not, I don't, I feel like the PSG Barca game, you know, could be two, two. A lot of times. So I, I have goalies from the other game. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Kobol, if he doesn't get the win, he's cheap still. And uh, maybe he can get six points on a save. And uh, and I also think there might be just maybe every team scores a goal. Yeah. You know. That can happen. And when every team scores a goal, I think you just want the cheaper option. So Pretty much. Fair enough. Anyway, it, it's tough to talk about goalkeeper when the optimal goalkeeper was a point five six uh, fantasy points. So um, it, that's the that's the position that we're talking about. So good luck in your goalkeeper picks, uh, Ryan. Anything else? I think we broke down most of the angles here. At least this helped me personally. Help think about my lineups tomorrow. But any other takes you have to get off your chest? No, I don't think so. Uh, wait for lineups to come out. I guess. Yeah, um, sounds, sounds just good I, I yeah I, I know I, I just won't uh, make too many decisions until lineups come out. You know I don't want to get tunnel vision. Wait for lineups to come out, 
see if you still think the same about how the games are going to go, about how the subs are going to go, just all that sort of stuff, and and then go. Sounds good. Yeah, especially if you're making a lot of lineups. I saw we're, we're this late in the show, so if you're still listening, you might be interested. I saw some people in the Discord, Ryan, they're talking about how hard it is to build 20 lineups because, like, you know, that we've had a lot of big king of the pitch slates where they have to build a lot of lineups. So like, oh, I make all my lineups and then I have to tinker with them. That is not the way to go, everyone. I learned how to do this the hard way. I think I had to ask you, Ryan, because I had the most awful way of building my lineups. I went to the contest tab. I opened 20 tabs, and I would just rip them through one by one. But I always wait before the hour. But if you use the lineup tabs, you can make, like, three dummy lineups, group a bunch, and you can kind of just, like, make a tree of lineups going out there. And I think if you just start with three main ideas that you're going to want to deviate off of, I think you can make 20 lineups if you need to make 20 lineups. And it's not going to be so tedious. I play cash. I spend a half hour with cash. I DM people. I talk to people. I think about it. And I can still build 20, I think, decent lineups, especially at lower stakes, in that amount of time. So if you give yourself time sure. to prep and don't pre-make them, because it's too hard. And then like DK scrambles your lineups when you make changes. You don't want to pre-make 20 lineups, I think. So don't do that. Just try this sort of perspective. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, no. Don't pre-make that many. Sometimes I'll pre-make them in blocks. Actually, today, like, I thought KDB was just going to start for sure. So I thought, like, I had made, like, sort of some different blocks of lineups already. And then, yeah, KDB didn't start. I just put them all back into one lineup, uh, exported them all back into the same lineup, and then started over. But, yeah, it's good to plan, you know, especially, like, if you're worried about time. It, you definitely want to plan. Um but yeah, I wouldn't try, like build 20 lineups out before seeing seeing the lineups. Like your thoughts might totally change. And also, the other reason that's dangerous is because you uh, you might be like you might be wrong. Like or like um, what am I trying to say? Like yeah, sometimes the slate changes based on the lineups. You know. And like you will already have decided which route you're going to take and who you're going to fade and who you're going to play, but it's not the, the same anymore. Construction completely changes, and right, your and you're, are, yeah. you're already set on. You know, it may have been the right move if certain lineups came out, but it's not the right move anymore. But now you're sort of stuck in that because you've already planned that way. So, I think being flexible is the most important. You definitely got to like rethink about rethink. I guess your your stance on stuff. Yeah, I think so too. So I, I, I just in case anyone needs that, if there's any more five dollar contests, I think uh, I don't know. That stuff wasn't obvious to me at the start, and I feel like it might not be obvious to a lot of listeners. So those little quality of life improvements using DraftKings to your favor when you're hand building that many lineups, I think uh, I think you need all the help you can get to because otherwise it's just about all brainless clicking. So a little more brain we can add to the process goes a long way but um uh, you know that's i think all i had to get off my chest but uh i think we can wrap this one up ryan thanks everyone so much for joining us if you're not a subscriber already please join us rotowire.com backslash soccer trial if you are or you don't want to become one for whatever reason makes us sad but you can support us by liking this video you can leave a comment you can comment on our podcast feed all that sort of engagement adds up so we appreciate your listenership and uh if you do something like that that helps us uh, keep doing these shows for free, Ryan, and it's a pleasure to do them. So hopefully that continues. But I think we will just uh, see you next week, and good luck in your contests tomorrow, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Good luck, everybody.